Praise the Lord. I believe the Lord is touching, transforming, and blessing everyone at the workers' retreat. I pray that not only here, but even after the retreat, for the rest of our lives, every day, blessed Jesus will hold your hand. Amen. Father, we thank you for the glorious time we have together again. We we'll bless your name for all the ministers you are using in preaching, in singing, in attending to us. And I pray that you hold the hand of everyone to the very end in Jesus' name. We will not fall by the way. We will not fade by the way. Our energy and strength and vision will not fail us in the middle of our journey in Jesus' name. Do this for everyone. Make everyone stronger as we walk along as pilgrims into the glorious land in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Exodus chapter 13. And in Exodus chapter 13, we're reading from verse 17. Exodus chapter 13, reading from verse 17. The Lord had called the children of Israel. And the Lord that redeemed them out of the land of bondage, out of that furnace of fire where they had been for such a long time. And the Lord had made use of his strong hand, his mighty arm, and he brought them out of slavery. He brought them out of servitude. And now, after bringing them out, he's going to lead them, he's going to guide them until they get to the promised land. And the same thing is being for every one of us. He's brought us out of sin, out of the past wasted life. He's brought us into the kingdom by his redemption. And now he's going to lead, he's going to guide until we get to the promised land. You will get there, we will get there in Jesus' name. That's why today, or this time, our message is our guiding light from gloom to glory. The gloom of the past, the glory of the future. And the Lord is leading us from that past gloom to the future glory in exodus chapter 13 verse 17 and it came to pass when pharaoh had let the people go that god led them not through the way of the land of the philistines although that was near for god said let's for adventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt in verse 18. In verse 18 it says, But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up earnest, equipped out of the land of Egypt. Isn't it wonderful that Moses listened to God and followed the leading of the Lord, you must understand that Moses knew much of the wilderness. He's been walking there as shepherd all through those 40 years, and now as God used him to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, and they were to go a particular way. Moses knew that this other way was shorter and faster 
but he didn't interfere with God. He allowed God to lead him and to lead his people. The same thing with us as we come out of the world and we come into the kingdom and the Lord is going to be leading every area of our lives. We do not argue with God. This way is shorter. This way is better. This way is smoother. We allow the Lord by his guiding light to lead us until we get to glory. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. The Lord actually, he is the one taking them to the land of promise and he himself led them by that pillar of clouds to lead them in the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night you see what the lord has done there during the day he made a pillar of clouds to lead them and also to shield them and to overshadow them as he leads them along and then in the night as they still continue in the night he led them by the pillar of fire and the pillar of fire will scare away will drive away all those night nocturnal a beast that might be a kind of before them scared all of them away and they were told in verse 22 in verse 22 he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night from before the people every time and every day he showed his presence there he showed his power there and all through their journey he kept on leading and guiding them and that's a, a precious a lesson for us he'll keep on guiding you he'll keep on leading you until the final end and there you move on to glory you are there and nothing will stop you getting to that land of glory in jesus name look at chapter 15 in chapter 15 verse 13 chapter 15 verse 13 thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed he has redeemed them and after that redemption he now leads them as his people thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation and then in verse 17 in verse 17 thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in the place O lord which thou hast made for thee to dwell in in the sanctuary O lord which thy hands have established look at verse 18 the lord shall reign forever and ever over the people he guides the lord shall reign forever and ever over the people of his choice and the people who are redeemed and the people who are moving on from the past life and they have left all that behind and they're going on to that future glory land the lord will reign over their hearts over their thoughts over their utterances over their lives over their families over everything that concerns them he will reign supreme he will reign without a rival he will reign without any other master he will be the only one the powerful one the mighty one the solitary one that leads them and guides them and he reigns over them forever and ever and i pray that in your life Jesus will reign in your language Jesus will reign 
in all your actions Jesus will reign and as he guides us on and we move on in the power of the Lord and we're making progress as we're moving on to glory land every day every moment in every decision everything you do he will reign over your life in Jesus name our guiding light from gloom to glory there are three things we're looking at as we consider the message number one divine guidance out of the world towards the holy habitation that's where we're going towards the holy habitation we never deviate we never allow anything to jolt us anything to turn us around anything to divert our attention from the holy habitation divine guidance out of the world towards the holy habitation number two daily guidance there's no day he will not guide you i didn't hear your amen every day and every moment every decision you see we have to make decision every day as we're following the lord in small things and in big things and we don't say oh lord i give you vacation this one is a small matter i can use my brain my intelligence i can do this never every day daily guidance from our wanderings to the heavenly habitation number three declared guidance by his word it is hallowed habitation let's come to number one in number one we have divine guidance it's divine it's supernatural it's coming from god it's coming from heaven divine guidance out of the world towards the holy habitation and three things we're going to consider under that heading divine guidance after conversion and separation from the world we're redeemed we're saved we're converted we're taken out of the world and we're on our way to the heavenly land and he guides us divine guidance after conversion and separation from the world number two denied guidance to compromisers and uh, sympathizers with the worldly wise you see there are people although they claim to be born again they lean towards the worldly wise the people who don't know god they're reaching their books and they show their programs and they take their guidance from there and once you are taking your guidance from the worldly wise then the lord will say Ephraim must join himself to idols let him alone he wants to take his guidance from the human he wants to take his guidance from the philosophers and the psychologists of the world let him alone and so he denies guidance to them because they are compromisers and they are sympathizers well the only wise number three is desired guidance with clear conscience and self-surrender to his word look at number one number one divine guidance after conversion and separation from the world and let's go to exodus chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 13 exodus chapter 12 we're reading from verse 13 here the lord has promised he said and the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt that's their conversion that's the point where the judgment came upon those who were not under the protection and the, and, the, and the provision of the blood. Judgment came on them, but these ones, they had their faith in the blood of the Lamb. And because of that faith in the blood of the Lamb, they were converted. They were redeemed. 
they were saved they were taken out of darkness and they are brought into the light it's after that the guidance now came look at verse 33 in verse 33 and the egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste for they said we be all dead men verse 41 it says in verse 41 and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years even the self same day it came to pass that all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt very definite about their conversion verse 51 in verse 51 and it came to pass in the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies it was after that after that conversion the Lord now began to guide them and you know it's the same thing with us it's after we come out of the world come out of Egypt come out of darkness come out of every known sin and then we surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ it becomes our savior it becomes a redeemer it becomes our sacrifice the lamp of God that taketh the sin of the world away and we totally surrender to him and we're saved and the Spirit of God bears witness in our heart that we're children of God and the Egyptians they bear witness that we're no more like them we're no more with them we are not what we used to be we have come out of their Egypt and they've seen us going out and they see that now our lives have slipped outside Egypt our life is lived outside all the all the pollutions all the transgressions all the sinful practices of the past and we are free God knows it we know it the Egyptians know it and the Spirit of God bears witness in our heart that we are saved the angels know it that we have repented we have turned away from our sins and things are different now that's conversion my brother if you just say I'm converted and the angels don't know it and they are not rejoicing in heaven and God doesn't attest to that and he's not writing the name in the book of life and the Holy Ghost does not bear witness that to a child of God go back to Calvary and have a conversion and have a transformation that God knows that you know that the Spirit of God knows that the Egyptians, the worldly people, they know pointedly you are no more with them. And then actively every day you are walking and walking, not towards the center of Egypt. You are walking to glory land. That's conversion. And it is after that that the guiding light of the Lord will guide you. He will guide you. I said they will guide you. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 1, we're looking at verse 33. It tells us here about the children of Israel. And what we learn about the children of Israel is also a related unto us. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 33, who went in the way before you. He's talking about the Almighty God. He said, He went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tent in in fire by night to show you by the way by what way ye should go and in a cloud by day it doesn't leave the journey into your hand the progress into your hand it doesn't leave the decisions into your hands it saves you he brings you out. He puts your feet on the way that leads to glory. He makes you to walk in the narrow way, in the highway of holiness that leads to your destination. And then he searches out places of rest 
and places of refreshing and places of restoration as you are going on in the way look at number two there number two there is talking now about denied guidance to compromisers and sympathizers with the worldly wise and there are people you you, do, you don't understand them we can't understand them one leg in one leg outside they're singing the song of canaan they're eating the food of egypt they are they have the picture of egypt before them and every time although they appear to be with the mixed multitude of the people who have come out of egypt yet in their thoughts in their plans in their marriage in their family in their customs in their tradition in all the things they do they act exactly like egypt the diet of egypt that's what they stick to the ideas of egypt that's what they stick to the marriage plan and the marriage style of egypt that's what they stick to and the worldly uh, events that the people do that's what they stick to their compromisers although they claim to be christians heaven does not approve of their lives their principles their practices everything they do their proposals everything is like the world they are compromisers in fact we are told in ezekiel chapter 20 ezekiel chapter 20 we're told in verse 3 son of man speak unto the elders of israel and say unto them thus says the lord god are ye come to inquire of me the lord was asking have you come to inquire of me he wanted to know from them where do you stand are you a compromiser are you a sympathizer with the worldly wise he said as i live says the lord i will not be inquired of by you he denied them the guidance he denied them the knowledge they were asking for he denied them the vision the revelation the instruction they wanted to get you know why because they were compromisers are you a compromiser are you in the church are you live like the world are you think like the world and then you are coming to god you want direction directives from god it doesn't work that way he denies his guidance to the people whose hearts are not holy completely totally yielded unto him look at verse 6 there he tells us in verse 6 in the day that i lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of egypt into the land that I had espied for them flowing with milk and honey which is the glory of all lands look at verse 7 it says in verse 7 then said I unto them cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt i am the lord your god is that total separation that absolute surrender unto god that wins the favor of god and then he gives us his guidance because we're walking in the way but when you become a compromiser when you become a sympathizer with the worldly wise you lose that favor you lose that grace and you lose that light and you lose that revelation and you lose that guidance he would have given unto you look at verse 8 it tells us in verse 8 but they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me they did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes neither did they forsake the idols of egypt 
then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. The Lord wants us to abide by his word. And as we abide by his word, and we're not caught in corners, and we're not modifying the message of redemption and the reality of redemption in our lives, then it will guide us. But if we become worldly, look at what the Bible says in First John chapter 2, verse 15. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if anyone, man or woman, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The one who doesn't love the Father, who is only coming when there's a need, I want to get married, guide me. I want to know where to live, guide me. I want to have a job, guide me. I want this, I want this. He wants to use God as a puppet. He wants to use God as an agent. He wants to use God as an errand boy. And God says, you are human. I am supernatural. And you want to use me. You don't love me. You love the world. I cannot guide you. He will not guide the compromisers and the sympathizers were the worldly wise. It says in verse 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father. Is not of the Father. The lust of the flesh, the inordinate affections of the flesh, and the things that people do and practice that shows that they're giving to the flesh and they're of the flesh and they're not of the spirit it's not of the father the lost of the eyes the things people look at and then it sends sinful signal into their soul into their spirit into their life it's not of the father and the pride of life you know that uh, that pride and exalt himself and anywhere he is and even where she is they want she wants to be recognized there every time and it's not lowly and meek like our savior jesus christ the pride of life is not of the father but it is of the world and then it says in verse 17 and the world passes away and the laws thereof but he that Doers, the will of God abided forever. Those are the people they will guide. The people who take the commandments of God and the people who accept the commandments of God and the people who walk in the way of the Lord. Those are the people is going to guide. But the worldly wise and the fleshly man and a fleshly woman and the one that has affection for the world and their heart is not fully totally cleansed and surrendered unto the lord there's no divine guidance for such people it denies guidance for them in james chapter 4 reading from verse 4 james chapter 4 when looking at verse 4 it says ye adulterers and ye adulteresses know ye not the friendship of the world is the enemy of God is talking about spiritual adultery you understand the normal fleshly family adultery when a man gives himself to another woman and not to his wife when a woman gives her heart her life to another man and not to the husband there are people that do that and did they not do it spiritually and they take their mind away from God and it says they are adulterers it says they are adulteresses don't you know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world 
is the enemy of God. As somebody has given himself to the world, has given herself to the world, her mind, her thoughts, her lifestyle, her plans, her goals, her destination, everything he gives to the world is an enemy of God. And then he comes to God and said, God, you know what? I want you to guide me. I'm trying to take this decision. Hold on. If the Lord guided you in that situation, you're going to use the guidance to satisfy the flesh. You're going to use the guidance to uh, deepen your enmity with God. And so that's why God will not guide such people. But we thank God we come out of all that. And then we come to God and he guides us. Because we love his word. Because we love the redeemed ransomed life. And because we love the way of holiness. He will guide you. I said it will guide you. Look at number three here now. Number three is the desired guidance with clear conscience and self-surrender to the word of God. We surrender to the word of God. We say that is the number one thing the light that guides me and when God sees that we have made use properly of the first scene which is the watch of God then all the other areas of guidance will come unto you Hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 20 by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to see his flesh look at verse 21 in verse 21 and having an high priest over the house of god verse 22 he says let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water you see when you do that seriously and you do that wholeheartedly and you do that in honor to god you do that in honor to the christ that shed his blood for you and you are presented unto him fully without looking back he cleanses your heart he cleanses your conscience he says then he will guide you i said he will guide you look at first john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 20 there first john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 20 for if our heart condemn us not god is greater than our heart and he knoweth all things you see when we when we come in the presence of god i was seeking his guidance was seeking his guiding light he looks at our heart he searches our heart and he knows all things if there's anything in the corner there i see we're giving part of our lives to the evil one we're giving part of our lives to things of the world he knows he knows and we're giving part of our lives to fulfill and satisfy self he knows and then the guidance will not come until we're just and we say lord now I all to jesus i surrender all to him i will i freely give it is when our heart our soul our spirit our thought everything is aligned with his word and he knows when that takes place that's when the guidance will come look at verse 21 in verse 21 beloved if our heart condemn us not then we have confidence toward God. And then in verse 22, it says, And whatsoever we ask, guidance included, and whatsoever we ask, the guiding light and the decision we ought to take, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. I pray the Lord will so work by His grace in our heart, in our mind, in our spirit, in our soul, 
that will totally unreservedly belong to him and then he will guide us with divine guidance in jesus name okay i will say the amen here amen let's look at number two now point number two daily guidance from the from our wanderings to the heavenly habitation my brothers and sisters walkers in the vineyard of the lord the reason why we want guidance is so that eventually we will be in that heavenly habitation let's let's reason together the lord even said come let us reason together says the lord if you have water out of the rock miraculously but you don't get to canaan land the promised land what's the use if you take the bread of angels the bread manna from heaven like those children of israel took and they never go to the land of canaan what's the profit if you have the guiding light of the cloudy pillar and of the fire of the fiery pillar and you have that guidance every day you don't fall into any pitch here on earth in the wilderness but if like the children of israel you don't get to the heavenly habitation what is the use if you are able to conquer all the amalekites uh, like they conquered the amalekites in exodus 17 uh, and yet eventually you don't get to the heavenly habitation what is the use if you have everything you want uh, and every guidance you want and every provision you want here on earth and you don't get to the heavenly habitation what is the use our reason for demanding and for asking and for expecting the daily guidance in all these wanderings is so that we can get to the heavenly habitation i pray you'll be there I pray you'll be there. I look at Exodus chapter 13. We're reading from verse 18. But God led the people. He bowed through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up. They didn't go deeper into Egypt. They went up and asked out of the land of Israel. Egypt. We're told in Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 15. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven. Holy habitation from heaven. And bless thy people Israel and the land which thou hast given us as thou swearest unto our fathers a land that floweth with milk and honey. Three things we're looking at here. Number one is unmistakable guidance in the way in the way it's leading us in the way the right way the righteous way and then he guides us unmistakably in that way number two is unsurpassable guidance by the word it's revealed his mind it's revealed his word and if we're going to have first class guidance we must go back to the word because that guidance in the word by the word is unsurpassable number three is unquestionable guidance to his will he will not guide us to something that is contrary against his will but he guides us he guides us in an unquestionable way to the fulfillment of his will. Let's come to number one. His unmistakable guidance in the way. He tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verse 2. And thou shalt remember 
all the way, all the way, all the way, which the Lord thy God led thee, he led thee all the way, these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no in verse 3 he says while guiding us he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know that man does not live by bread only but by every word, every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord, does man live. He guides us in the way. And now he tells us in John chapter 16, verse 13, John chapter 16, Verse 13 is talking about when the Spirit will come. And it says, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide. When the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide. He comes to abide with us. And He comes to dwell in us. As we are saved, born again, the Spirit of God is with us. As we are sanctified, the Spirit of God draws closer and closer to us. When we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, that Spirit of God dwells in us in a baptismal measure, boundless measure. And now when He comes, He will guide us. He will show us the way. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The Holy Ghost knows the future. He knows the things to come. And when you are filled, saturated, enveloped empowered by that dynamite of the holy ghost he guides us into all truth all truth of scripture all truth in the way we ought to go all truth that will get us into the desirable destination of the future you know there are people who speak in tongues, speak in tongues every time they pray and then in the church, in the public worship, every time speak in tongues, speak in tongues. But the real major ministry of the Holy Spirit is that He will guide you into all truth. And we see all these people, they are ignorant of the truth, the truth of Scripture and the truth of guidance for themselves and the truth of taking decisions and the truth of living according to the power and the provision of the word of god they are ignorant of that and yet they say they are filled with the holy ghost the purpose of being filled being energized being empowered and doubt by the spirit is that when he comes he will guide you into all truth and then he will show you things to come you'll not just be falling into this pitfall and that ditch and that ditch and then you say you have the holy ghost you've not been making so many mistakes that makes you to be broken and to be shattered because you do not have the real guidance of the holy spirit we're coming to number two number two is the unsurpassable guidance by his word that's why we reach that word every day study that word every day that's why we're familiar with that word every time and we're reading for guidance we're reading for light 
We're reading for direction. We're reading to know the might of God because it is in the knowing of that word of God we are guided day by day and the guiding of the word is unsurpassable we're looking at psalm 119 reading from verse 105 psalm 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path how much of the word do you read how much of the word do you study how much space do you give to the word in your heart in your mind to direct you and to control you or do you study the word and when the time comes to make a decision and to go a particular direction you don't even remember the word you don't even consult the word thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path verse 130 in verse 130 the entrance of thy word giveth light but the word cannot enter if you don't open the door you have to open the door for the word for the light if you shut your windows and shut your doors the place will be dark open the window open your mind open your ears open your spirit open your heart and then the word will enter the entrance of thy words giveth light it giveth understanding unto the simple in psalm 43 we're reading from verse 3 psalm 43 we're reading from verse 3. It says, O send out thy light and thy truth. From heaven, send thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. You see that? The truth of the word sent to me, O Lord. And let the truth of your word that you sent from heaven lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill. Is the word not opinions, not ideas, not denominational tradition? It's the word, it's the truth of scripture that will lead you and bring you unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacle is the word that will do that in second timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 16 second timothy chapter 3 we're reading from verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration all scripture old testament and new testament all scripture is given by inspiration all scripture genesis to deuteronomy pentateuch and then from joshua on to job all those words all scripture and then from job on to the song of solomon the words of wisdom all scripture and then from Isaiah to malachi and from matthew to john and the acts of the apostles and all the epistles and revelation everything coming together all scripture is given by inspiration of god inspiration of god if you're looking for revelation from god it's in the inspiration of god if you abandon the inspiration of god and you're looking for revelation Revelation, you'll go into error but all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness in verse 17 that the man of God may be perfect may be fulfilled may be complete thoroughly furnished unto all good works I pray the effect of the word will be seen and visible in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number three now, number three is the unquestionable guidance to his will. That's what you want. That's what you want. That you know that you know and that you are very sure and certain that what you are doing what you are planning 
what you are designing ties up with the total perfect will of God and that's why he wants to guide us and lead us into that will Psalm 143 verse 10 in Psalm 143 reading from verse 10 teach me to do thy will teach me to do thy will why because it's doing the will of God that will get us into the heavenly habitation that will get us to heaven at last if we come into the kingdom of God we're saved we're redeemed and now while in the kingdom we don't even know the will of God. We don't know what pleases God. We don't know what God desires. And we just live the best we know how. But we're ignorant of the will of God and the will of the Father. Remember, the people that will abide forever are the people that do the will of God. That's why it's telling us here, and it's making a prayer point here, and it says in Psalm 143 verse 10, teach me, I need teaching. Lead me, I need leading. Guide me, I need guidance. Instruct me, I need instruction. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good lead me into the land of uprightness lead me into the land into the land where there's no sin there's no iniquity and there's no consequence of sin there is no death there is no sickness there is no suffering there's no sorrow the land of uprightness up above the heavenly habitation lead me there the Lord will lead you and the Lord will guide you he tells us in Psalm 25 reading from verse 9 Psalm 25 we're looking at verse 9 the meek not the proud the meek not the pompous the meek not the self-sufficient the meek not the self exalted the meek will he guide in judgment the meek will he teach his way when you come with the mind of christ and you're meek and lowly and you're humble in his sight and you say i don't know but you know everything and you are the one to guide me in that stage of meekness in that spirit of meekness he will guide and he will lead the meek will he teach his way he tells us in verse 12 look at verse 12 what man is he that fearest the lord that honoreth the Lord, that has the filial fear of God in his heart, him shall he lead in the way that he shall choose. You find many people saying, I wanted to know the will of God. Number one, the only will of God they want to know is the will of God in marriage. You don't want to know the will of God in action in all that decision, in the manner of life, in the way they conduct themselves. They don't want to know the will of God to live in such a way to please God every time. All they want to know is the will of God in marriage. The Lord doesn't give himself to that kind of narrow, selfish understanding of knowing the will of God. What man is he that fears the Lord? Him will he teach in the way that he shall choose. The way that he will choose. It tells us in Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. There is a service that is unreasonable. What kind of service is that? The service that comes and the body is not presented to God as a living sacrifice. The body is not holy. The tongue is not holy. The utterances are not holy. Such a person lives a sinful life outside and then he enters and then he begins to say he's offering service to the Lord. That's not acceptable to God. A holy sacrifice, a living sacrifice, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. If you're already planning your life in conformity to the world, how can you then pretend and be critical and say, God, guide me? Already you have chosen the way you want to follow. If you're going to talk like the world and plan like the world and eat like the world and make merry means like the world and the see, you're even the marriage we're talking about, already you are planning. You're going to get all the dramas and you're going to do it like the world and you're going to be a worldly person and then you have not even done the marriage you're still looking forward and you say the world will hear and the world will know that there's somebody here who does not follow the way of the Lord but who follows the way of the world and his daddy also a member of the church is in agreement mommy also a member of the church is in agreement and you're planning and you're going to do it in conformity to the world how will you know the will of God everything will just be the way of the world from the choice you are making to the plan you are making and to the ceremony you are making but if you want to be guided by the Lord and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. I pray that will of God will be done in your life, will be perfected in your life, and will be visible in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number three now, the declared guidance by his word in his hallowed habitation in his hallowed habitation three things we're looking at number one the spirit's guidance of saints in his habitation in his habitation number two the shepherd's guidance and sustenance in his holiness the shepherd's guidance and sustainers in his holiness number three the servants guidance of souls into the holiest were servants of god and were guiding other people leading other people were guiding them into the holiest the holy of holies let's come to number one number one the spirit's guidance of saints in his habitation isaiah chapter 63 we're reading from verse 8 isaiah chapter 63 verse 8 for he says surely they are my people who are the children that will not lie children that will not lie so he was their savior those who trade in lies and deception they are not the children of god there are people lies deception are on the tip of their tongue and whatever you ask them they claim to be born again they claim to be workers and yet whatever you ask them a lie will come out automatically 
they say it's white lie. I don't mean any wrong. I'm not killing him or the lie, but you're misdirecting him. You want him to believe something that is not true. That's a lie and that's injurious. And if you do that to your leaders and you tell them a lie and they walk on that lie, they will act in an unscriptural way. But you know the children of God who are going to be led by the Lord for he said, surely they are my people. Why are these people? children that will not lie so he was their savior look at verse 11 in verse 11 then he remembered the days of old moses and his people saying where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock where is he that put his holy spirit within them cloudy pillar during the day the pillar of fire during the night and then for their personal guidance in the way they ought to go he put his holy spirit within them we're looking at isaiah chapter 63 now verse 12 in verse 12 that led them by the right hand of moses with his glorious arm dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name is for his glory and then in verse 13 he tells us in verse 13 that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble you will not stumble i will not stumble the Lord will keep you upright unto that glorious day in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, as a beast goes down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. You know, those who all say they have the spirit of the Lord and they have restlessness, they have worry, they have anxiety, they have stress, they have distress, they have depression, they have mental problem. How can that be? The spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. There is rest. There's refreshing, there's restoration. When you're filled and you are guided and comforted by the Spirit of God, so did thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Let's look at number two. Number two is the shepherd's guidance and sustenance in his holiness, his shepherd. As you look at Psalm 80 verse 1, in Psalm 80 verse 1, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth through your life and the residence of the Holy Ghost in your life, it will shine forth in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 20. Hebrews chapter 13, we're reading from verse 20 now. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant verse 21 make you perfect in every good work to do his will he will do it in your life i said he will do it in your life walking in you because he resides in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever 
and ever amen we're coming to number three there number three is the servant's guidance of souls to the holiest as we are servants of god and then he guides us he guides us in the holy way and to the holiest of the lord in jeremiah chapter 23 reading from verse 4 jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4 and i will set up shepherds over them i will set up shepherds over them that shall which shall feed them and they shall fear no more you are shepherds and the lord sets you over his heritage and the people you are set over all the fears of the negative and the fears of sickness and the fears of satan every form of fear in the day and the night the lord will use you and wipe out all the fears in their hearts in jesus name i didn't hear my people say amen if god will use you to wipe away all fear in the minds, in the heart, in the life, in the family of all people, you yourself, that God is using as shepherds to guide the sheep and to guide the flock to the holy of holies and to the holiest, you the instrument and you the tool that god is using every fear it will cancel out of your life fears in the day fears in the night fears of the river fears of the mountain fears of the valley fears of the occult and fears of anything coming from behind coming from the front coming from the side coming in the night every fear is cancelled in your life and i will set up shepherds over them that shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking i need to read that again i'm waiting for an amen neither shall they be lacking says the lord God is going to use you and in the lives of all the people you are leading every lack the Lord will take away and if God uses you to take every lack away from their lives spiritual natural physical domestic professional in every way no lack God is going to use you that there'll be no lack in their lives in your own life in your own family and in your own profession and in your own ministry the work of the lord will so prosper in your hand there'll be no lack in your life in jesus name in my life in my life no fear in my life no turning back in my life no lack of any good thing the lord confirm it in your life in jesus name why don't you rise up now and talk to the lord and say lord i thank you there is divine guiding light from the world this world unto the world to come tell the lord tell the lord the lord has favor on you today and the lord will fulfill it in your life no lack anymore in your life in jesus name 